Ladies and gentlemen, everyone, welcome to you. You're watching another episode of Encounter. In the studio with us at the NBC, we still have the Right Reverend Jan Enes, Bishop of Mauritius. Uh, thank you very much for still being with us for this second it episode. It's a privilege to be, for me to be here with you. And uh, in this episode, can we speak a bit about the essence and symbolism in the Christian uh, community? Of course. Um, very often, uh, when we do the what we call the signe du croix, the cross, we ref we, we, ha we make reference to uh, au nom du Père et du Fils et du Saint Esprit. God the Father, God the Son, the Son and God and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, because it expresses our faith in the Trinitarian God, God as Father and Creator, God as Son and Savior, God as Comforter and uh, counselor. Can, can we discuss a little bit more? Uh, mm. is, is it what you call the Holy, Holy Tri Trinity? Holy Trinity, yes. yes. Uh, so you have the Father, the Creator. The Creator. The Creator. What is the Creator? The Creator is the one who made the universe, who has created us, uh, human beings, in His image, and who has given us the responsibility so that we can live with Him and cater for the needs of the world. Uh, but uh, in giving us uh, that essence of uh, being in existence has, has given us also his love and out of his love has given us the freedom to choose him. And, and so, unfortunately, as I mentioned in the earlier episode, that uh, we have abuse of the freedom given to us and we wanted to be gods ourselves. And uh, this is where, uh, and w out of this uh, disobedience comes that spirit of unfaithfulness which we can see all around. <laughs> uh, that unfaithfulness that uh, definitely destroys relationships, that uh, alienates one from the other. Unfaithfulness so, towards uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, no, unfaithfulness towards God, God the Creator, God has the creator. brought us uh, out of His presence. Of and that characterizes the world today we live in. There's a lot of infidelity around, uh, you know, and, and this uh, brings a lot of suffering, a lot of distress, a lot of sadness. And then, God so loved the world. He's never uh, failed to love us. And that's how he came back again for the voice of the prophets. The Old Testament is full of God's intervention in the life of his people, urging on them to come back to him. But again, we see that, uh, unfortunately, uh, the ability of, uh, of us to have what we call in French, la nuque red. We are stubborn. Yes. We want things to go our own way. We want to satisfy our own needs. But God has come back to us. He sent his prophets. They have not been properly welcomed. They have not been listened to. And uh, then he said, he'll come himself, his son. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He's come to share our life journey. He's come to share in our suffering and he's come to save us so that we are restored. So Jesus Christ is the one who restores us in our relationship with God. He's come to us. So the Son is the Redeemer who comes from God. And in our creed we do uh, mention about Christ being conceived by the Holy Spirit and who comes and begotten from God. And he is without sin. He's without sin. sin. If, you're, if you're a sinner, that means uh, it's related also to being unfaithful, I guess. That's right, and faithful to what you are called for, being a child of God, being obedient to God. Today, there is a, a sort of, uh, I would say, coming back, a need to be spiritual, a need to look for something that goes beyond uh, our environmental needs. We need something that can really brings, bring to us a profoundness of life where we have profound joy, profound peace. That's why people go and look for things that can bring to them that solace, that spirit of serenity. And it is important of, for us to be able to know that if we wish to go on that spiritual uh, discovery, uh, there is a need for it today. 
because people have got so many facilities around, they don't have to fend for their, for their basic needs, uh, most of us. So that's where Christ has come and showed us the way. And when he met after his resurrection, his disciples, he said, my peace I give unto you. So uh, unfortunately, our, indip uh, our unfaithfulness uh, definitely severes our dependence of God. And when we talk about social issues, it is because God is not present in our hearts. God is the solution to all the problems? I would say is the solution is the one who has created us, who has given us uh, glimpses of his characteristics. We, ha we are the bearers of the life of God within us. And, but it is for us to accept it in all freedom and to act upon it. And uh, Mother Teresa has come from Albania, has listened, has heard, and has seen the suffering, and she denied herself to bring about the healing and the liberating presence of God. And when you look at her other life and those of many other people even today they have a life of intimacy with god what about uh, the holy son yeah the son comes from the father his uh, his responsibility is to participate in the mission that god has entrusted to him to come and share our life to uh, give uh, to us a sense of purpose he brought the signs of God's power by uh, multiplying signs of healing, of liberation. But he mentioned that after each healing and sign of liberation, he said, your faith has saved you. What do you mean by healing? Healing means to be able to be uh, freed from the ailments that we have. And it's, it's, you don't mean to physical ailments, it's yeah, more yeah, of course, we the believe in the power of God, being Christ as healed. Even today in the church we have uh, healing ministries where we go and, 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 and have ministry of healing with people, pray with them. And we let God, it's not us, but we let God do the rest. So you help people into the right path of how it has yeah, to be Yeah, and it is yeah. through the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the main mission of Christ in the world was to bring salvation. Uh, so I keep asking you many questions. What do you mean by salvation? Salvation is to be able to, uh, is to be freed from that sinful nature of ours so that we can enjoy the glory of God. It's, it's all interconnected. Yeah, it's, it's all, all so interconnected. Yeah. Uh, but we come to the third person of the Holy Trinity. Which because is the we Holy cannot, Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Because we can't do it on our own. Again, God intervenes <laughs> and comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, in our tradition, we are baptized. Then we are confirmed. That is, we take note of the presence of God and we reaffirm our commitment to him. And that's where his promises that I will never leave you alone. I will send the counselor. And the counselor is the Holy Spirit which today drives the church. So that's why uh, when you do the sign of cross, when yeah. you think of... Um, some of us do, some of us don't do. Yeah, yeah. But when we do it, we do it to honor the Father, the Son, Son and, and the Holy Spirit. So that's the reason why yeah, there but is... But this is, this is not uh, something which is again imposed as we Anglicans. Some do, some do not. Uh, but if we do, we, we, we do it with this understanding that with we the consciousness of why you, you do it yeah we exactly. belong to a trinitarian god and uh, and uh, that's why we do it and but it should not but it should not be a sort of of, of, of a sign that we just do it automatically I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of humbleness when you do it and a lot of understanding when yeah. and it's, al it's also why uh, you wear a, cr a yeah, cross the bishop the, yeah. is given a pectoral cross because my responsibility as a bishop is to talk about the victory of Christ on the cross. He has conquered death, he has conquered sin, and we are now a redeemed people.
And also uh, the reason why you do the sign of the cross is also the same reason why people, many people wear the crosses also. Yes, yeah, some people wear the cross. Uh, it, it is a symbol of their belonging, but that does not necessarily make them a Christian. Of course, it doesn't sense, stop to because be... Because what yeah. makes us a Christian is the sign of the cross on our forehead when we are baptized, because then there's a level of commitment. Uh, you're talking about uh, baptized. Uh, why is there such a ceremony? It, uh, this is something that Christ himself has instituted, which is called a sacrament. Right. A sacrament is, an, is a visible um, sign which talks or which expresses the invisible grace of God within us. So by the grace of God, we are given an identity, that of being a child of God. So uh, it is important, water purifies. So when water is, uh, is poured, onto poured the forehead. on the forehead, uh, we are purified and the grace of God comes into us and gives us that identity of being a child of God, an inheritor of his kingdom and a disciple of Christ. Uh, where you also renounce yes, to, that, to Jesus that, Christ. Uh, yeah, there is a renunciation of the world and an acceptance of Christ. Of course, this has an impact on the way we are to uh, live. But and this also is called transformation. But it also gives you the direction in which you should probably follow. Of course, and this is what what's the church for. The church is there to guide. The church is there to teach, the church is there to welcome, the church is there to care, the church is there to love. What are the major issues that you find in Mauritius nowadays? Uh, if you find an issue or what, what is it that uh, you're working the most at the moment? Is to trust the future. Is to enable our young people to see that they are, they are the architects of their own future. And uh, God has a dream for mankind. And my own uh, 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 stake on it is that we dream for ourselves and at times our dreams are not fulfilled and we are frustrated. Whereas the dream of God is the dream of establishing his kingdom, a, a reign of justice, a reign of love, of respect a reign where we can really express the solidarity to each other. We do it, we have that ability, we have that potential to do it. And today when we look around, there's a lot of um, dis disrespectful attitudes around. There is a lot of unfaithfulness around. Even in the family cell, there's a lot of violent and insulting words that come and that brings about uh, great distress to the child who is being reared, to the child who is growing within that family cell. Words have power. Yeah, so not only words, but the actions. examples yeah, are power. Yeah. So, yes, the future is bright unless we take the responsibility of working towards it and that ability is given to us by God. So uh, the issue is to be able to work on self-denial, is to be less dependent on material well-being and to be more dependent on what goes down deep within us. Of course you have the, the aspect of service, you have the aspect of self-development, you have the aspect of, of rituals. Um, many people shift towards the meditation aspect nowadays which has become more and more popular nowadays. Mm -hmm. Is it the same? Uh, is it the same with you? What do you encourage you people to do you encourage people to meditate nowadays? Yeah and for us uh, there is the Psalm 1 in the Bible which says blessed is he that meditates the word of God day and night. He is like a plant uh, being uh, by the water side and it bears its fruit in its own time. That's what I believe. For somebody who doesn't meditate, how would you advise them to meditate? Is to share my own life. Is right. to bear the fruits 
uh, is to share the fruits that I have. And this is not on my, uh, it's not being uh, proud of what I have, but it's a question of sharing. And that's it. And it is, and I do hope that uh, uh, we are able to do that, you know, and encounter. Is there a specific technique how you meditate? Do you sit, do you breathe? Is there something that you say? Uh, how, would, how do you conduct uh, meditation? In the letter of the Hebrews to in, the, in the New Testament, it is said that you have to fix your mind upon Jesus. And uh, many uh, uh, mystics have each devised a way, and for me, uh, uh, the way that has been provided by St. Ignatius of Loyola, by St. Dominic and, and others also, have given uh, different, uh, different approaches, variations, different exactly. approaches. And uh, there's St. Cyril of St. Petersburg, who has given a simple prayer, which you do, sit straight, and you fix your mind on Christ. You sit on a chair? Uh, yeah, of course. You so sit you're, on a chair? You're, 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 the postures are just secondary, but they are important to, in a sense, to help you. You can kneel to, to prostrate yourself before the majesty of God. You can stand to praise Him. Of course. Of course, and you can sit to hear Him. What is the prayer? The, the prayer that I do every day of my life is, Jesus, Son of God, Savior of the world, have mercy upon me. Is there a specific time that you do this prayer or any other give, any given yes, opportunity? Uh, in you in our back? Anglican tradition, we have the Book of Common Prayer, we have morning prayer, we have midday prayer, we have prayer in the early evening, we have evening prayer, and before we go to bed, we have the complaint. And each time, in each set of prayers, we have a time of thanksgiving, of confession. So we have what we call uh, the cats. Uh, we have the confession, we have the adoration, we have the thanksgiving, and we have the supplication, the cats. The C -A -T -S. cats, yes. So you have to express your limitations and your fragility before God, then you adore him, then you give him thanks for what is given to you, and at the end, then you give your, you present to him what you have to ask from him because Jesus in the gospel says ask and you will be given ask and you will be, be given. given but first seek ye first the kingdom of God for all these things will be given unto you what does that mean that is seek God first seek his kingdom first and all the other things will come but you have to seek it genuinely though of course yeah of course and that's where the Trinitarian God comes in because the Holy Spirit is going to guide you through. All right, I'm, I will, I'm not saying this on a specific uh, community or religion, but um, nowadays people tend to think of God only in difficult times. Yeah, people don't I mentioned about that a bit yes, earlier. Yes, but yeah. they don't think about God. But this is an opportunity, isn't it? Exactly, but I think yeah. many people don't think of God when something good is happening. Some people do. Some people give thanks. When something good happens, when I hear uh, the, those who've been laureates, uh, the many, uh, every year every I year. hear that, they give thanks to their parents and they give thanks to God. Yes, many times, yeah. You know? We always hear yeah. it, yes. When there is healing of a, of a sick person, they give thanks to God. When there is a, a good news in the family, they give thanks to God. Yes, but that giving thanks to God uh, should go beyond of what we've received. It's it should go towards a loyalty towards God and the faith that God is the provider. Each time I travel, I've visited many countries in the world, and I, I really want to rush back home. And each time I want to rush back home, uh, I am, uh, you know, you, you visit beautiful countries, you are, you are well received, uh, but you want to go back home because here, God has given us an island which is not only beautiful physically, but beautiful for its people. We are able to talk to each other. Of course. We are able to share with each other. And uh, this is a, a country where we are striving to make the best of what we have. Give thanks to God for that. Definitely. And uh, uh, thanks to God for 
allowing us to live in such a paradise. There's yeah. probably a reason why we were born here. There's a, we, there's, there's a reason why we were not born in a, in a, in a country where there's a lot of war. Yeah. Or why should we I look for reasons? I think it's better to see, to see the benefit of being here. But what, what I'm trying to yeah, say is yeah. uh, when you realize that you were born here and not in another country where there are many problems, yeah. you so should give thanks, you yeah. give thanks for course, it. Of course, of course. And you realize how beautiful the country yeah. is. Yes, and that's where this letter comes in. When you give thanks, then you see the urge of participating in the life of this country. That was my call in my Lenten letter to the young people of my country to serve their country. And uh, what is the best way to serve a country? It's to love it. To love it. To love the people and to let God use you as an instrument of grace. My Lord Bishop, uh, we have almost come to the end of this second episode. Uh, before wrapping up, I would like to ask you, if somebody does not believe in God, uh, but is born in a Christian family, or even somebody who is not a, from a Christian family and does not believe in God, what would you tell to them? Respect them first. Respect their opinion respect who they are and then be myself and uh, I believe that we can make the difference with God. I have always said throughout this uh, encounter we have to let God be present and not let ourselves impose our ideas, our opinions, our perceptions. We just share the joy of belonging to God, of belonging to Christ like myself. I also want to ask you, how do you encourage someone to be more faithful and commit less sins? By being an example. By being an example? Yeah. By striving hard to be an example. Does that also come with uh, ethical yeah. and emotional Yeah. Uh, uh, values? Christ, Christ says, you have, uh, unfortunately, we always see the, the paille uh, dans les yeux de son prochain, on ne voit pas la poutre dans son oeil. All right. see, and that's it. So you have to see the goodness in the other. You have to see what, uh, you have to appreciate who the other is. He's also a child of God. So appreciate what is good instead of criticizing what is wrong. That's right. Broadly speaking, Broadly speaking. I'm, I'm no one to, to put in words. No, 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 that's right. And that's what Christ asks of us. And, and that's what uh, today church leaders around the world, religious leaders around the world are asking us to do. Is uh, one of the wonderful episodes of my life is that when I visit the prisons and when you meet with the inmates, they're just like you and me. They want a better life. And it is for us to encourage them to do that and not to see uh, the, uh, we have to, Definitely uh, condemn the sin, condemn the actions, but welcome and love the perpetrator. What is your message, your personal message for this past period and also uh, Easter that is coming up after? Through Jesus Christ, we have a new life. Death has been conquered and it is a life of hope that I should be imbued with. All right, we'll need some... Uh, definitions. What, what do you mean by death has been conquered? Because through the death of Christ, uh, death has been conquered. Yes, there is the physical death, but as a person creating the image of God, we are not meant to die. We are meant to live with God. And Christ has restored our life so that we live with God. So this is called resurrection. It goes beyond the physical aspect of, of it. Of course, of course, it goes beyond the physical aspect. And also, uh, he has conquered sin, and that gives me the ability to be reconciled with God and to be reconciled with others. This is like uh, an experience of loving someone. The experience of God is definitely unique for each person. And the uniqueness of my experience today uh, urges on me to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Well, let's uh, hope that uh, we can all work towards being uh, uh, more faithful, less sinful, and become uh, 
uh, better human beings yeah. and also the, and, and to be Christ-like in our teachings. And to be Christ-like, indeed, indeed. Well, um, my Lord Bishop, thank you very much for being with us uh, for these two episodes of Encounter. Mm -hmm. What a privilege it has been for me to be here to live a time of encounter. Encounter is not something uh, which is punctual. It brings around an establishment of friendship and I hope that will help us to grow together and well, work together. Thank you very much for thank your friendship you. and thank you very much for your time at thank the NBC. You. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, come to the end of uh, this second episode of Encounter with uh, Monseigneur Jan Ernest. Thank you very much for being with us. If you have any questions, inquiries, proposals, drop an email at encounter at mbc.itnet.nu. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.